everyone. Welcome to Decrypted by Us. I'm Afechi Ilazor, a junior at Brown University studying computer science and applied math. And today I'm super excited to talk about getting experience outside of class or how to get experience outside of class. So it's no secret that companies want you to have experience when you apply to a job or internship. So the issue becomes getting those first experiences. But what's really great is that that experience is anything valuable, meaningful, or impactful that you've done, not just a formal job or internship. So in this video, I'm going to cover the best experiences to partake in if you're a computer science or I guess technical student. So the first really good way to get experience outside of class is side projects. You probably hear this a bunch, but it really is true. Side projects are an amazing and fun way to get experience outside the classroom. The first thing is that you have full control, full control over what you can build. Um, so you're not limited to the scope of some assignment that you may not even like. Two, you're able to learn a lot about different conventions and technologies. Three is you can work independently or in a group. So either you get great experience owning an entire project on your own or collaborating with others on a technical project. The fourth is that it shows great initiative and skill on a resume. And finally, five, depending on what you make, you could earn some side income. Like you can put an app in the app store, for example. Um, it's not super common for side projects to make side income, but it is possible. So you really don't have to be a computer science expert to build a project, though it definitely can feel daunting to start from scratch. You wanna adjust the complexity of your project based on your skill level. And we're gonna leave some ideas slash links in the description um, for ideas on side projects. So they can be things like games, they can be things like um, algorithm implementations, you can build your own portfolio and you can follow tutorials as well and tailor it to um, what you wanna do. The second way is tutoring slash teaching slash TAing. So you can tutor or teach at a larger tutoring company, even something like Kumon, places like Dreamy Learning, um, Wiseant, there's many different um, tutoring companies that specialize in different things. Um, you can also tutor independently if you can source your own students or you can TA at your university after you've taken a course and you know you wanna come back and TA. So teaching is fun and helps you further master the material of the course you're teaching. And you can definitely make side income from this, especially if you're at a company doing it on your own and you can TA for pay or for credit, depending on where you go to and your choices. So it also teaches you how to communicate concepts clearly and simply, which is incredibly useful for any kind of job and really anything. And then teaching is something or teaching and TAing is something that recruiters love to see on a resume. Cause again, it demonstrates that you are a master of that specific topic. The third way is participating in hackathons or programs. So these offer opportunities to learn technical and soft skills and to build something you're interested in, though on a very accelerated schedule. So in hackathons and programs, there's oftentimes, you know, separate programming on the side where you can learn, um, you're participating in different workshops or you can actually, you know, hack away at things. So you really have the best of both worlds. So hackathons and programs are tons of fun and you're able to meet and work with smart, like-minded peers. And again, you don't have to have a lot of CS experience to participate, even just joining a team with more experienced people and doing less technical work can teach you a lot. You can do design work or you can just help out um, the other technical people when you can. I've also had friends who are like economic majors who will still go to hackathons. You really don't have to be a CS expert. And then finally, most hackathons have tons of company sponsors and individual companies typically host those programs. So you have exposure to career opportunities as well, if that's something you're interested in. The fourth way is clubs. This one is a bit of an obvious one, but clubs are a great way to get experience outside of class. So there are clubs that focus on education and building things, and there are others that are more community-based. And you can always start your own, maybe it's a mix of both. And different types of clubs have their advantages. One is like building things and getting experience. The other could be building your network, being involved in the e-board, doing different coordination activities. Um, but really the ones you join depend on your goals and preferences. The fifth way is research. Research in the CS department at your school or another university is a great way to get experience. And you can also do research for departments outside of CS because fields like sociology, economics, gender studies, etc., still need technical people. And this is a great way to clean up your technical skills or practice your technical skills um, and see real life applications, which are super cool. The sixth way is mentorship. So you can be exposed to mentors through clubs or specific mentorship programs. Through mentorship, you can learn technical skills and soft skills, build your network, and get tailored recommendations for further experiences. A great one for high school and undergraduate women that I was also a part of is hashtag built by girls, which we'll put in the description as well. Okay, so the final way is a regular job or internship. These positions can be harder to get without um, previous experiences. 
Some of you probably experienced, but that doesn't mean they are off the table. Plenty of companies offer freshman and sophomore programs, especially big companies, and others are open to hiring people with more sparse experience if the interview process goes well and they demonstrate existing skills and willingness to learn because you can still, of course, um, demonstrate your existing skills from class, um, even if you haven't um, had a wealth of outside experience. Okay, so we've covered seven great ways to get experience outside of class, but you're not limited to these. These paths are common and have a lot of value. You can get as crafty as you want when you're choosing how to spend your valuable time outside of class. So I hope that you now have a broad understanding of the opportunities that are available to you and do have fun when you're trying out these things. Um, please make sure to like and subscribe. We post videos every Monday. Comment any questions or any thoughts and we'll respond. All right, bye everyone.